Okay, I'm going to talk about something that's um, in the uh, market at 7. So, um, let's see here. So, we're going to start here. Let's look at market at 6. This is market at 6. Um, as folks might realize, there's a section in market at 6 called Mark Next. This is kind of an experimental section where I work with new tools um, and then bring them into the main application. Um, a lot of the tools going into this space are linked data related. So for example, in market at six right now, there's the uh, bid frame test bed, the JSON viewer, the linked data, linked identifier, Spockle browser, and open refine integration. Um, the linked identifiers actually is moved out of um, kind of experimental and is a production tool. Um, though I leave it in the mark next space um, because I'm you, because it relates to the linked data um, tool set. So one of the things in Mark Next has been a Sparkle browser. This was a very kind of dumb tool. Really was using it more for my own use um, so that I could test Sparkle endpoints. Um, it only returned XML back um, and was um, hard to use. Uh, so um, let's look at Market at 7. So Market at 7, um, I've refreshed the, uh, the Sparkle browser. So um, again, mark next. This is where you find those tools. Um, you'll see that I've taken away the JSON object viewer because the reality is I think um, most people have tools to read uh, JSON well, so we still have the four tool sets here. Um, if you open up the Sparkle browser now, you'll see it looks very different. Um, it's still basically the same thing. The outputs are different. So you've got JSON, XML, CSV, and RDF. Um, but one of the things I heard a lot from folks is that they had a difficult time seeing exactly how it worked um, because not everybody understands or knows what Sparkle is. So um, in an effort to help make it a little easier for people to see how it works, there's references over in the corner um, as well as examples. So you can see um, what this looks like when you're querying um, a Sparkle endpoint. So we have a mesh example here and in the mesh example we see the endpoint as well as the uh, um, additional parameter to um, require inference. And then we see um, here the actual query um, that gets run. It's looking for um, uh, responses for uh, human influenza. You can set a, an output. So JSON is the one that I would prefer in almost all cases. Um, and so we can get back um, our JSON um, output. We could also ask it to um, give us a different output. So XML gives us the raw Sparkle XML output. Um, if we wanted to get the CSV output, that's going to break it down mostly to um, what the uh, requests are, in this case, um, the identifier. Um, we can do the same thing for the Getty. So this is the Getty Sparkle endpoint, and this is a query for the concept term uh, copper, copper sulfate. Um, we can ask for JSON, go ahead and pass the query, uh, get back our our results back for JSON, so you can see what the JSON values are um, for this particular element. Uh, and then we have the Japanese Diet Library, which is um, the uh, uh, linked data endpoint um, for the, the library in Japan. And so we have here an example of a query um, for this particular heading. Um, we'll go ahead and run that query. Um, in this case, um, this tool uh, uh, has some trouble with, with this particular um, library, and so it kicks it back out in a, um, it goes ahead and runs the query, and it, 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 the tools that I'm using, um, when it recognizes the, uh, the Unicode values here, rather than encoding them, it posts them, and the Japanese diet library doesn't accept post requests. Um, so it notice that the results that come back are in HTML, and it goes ahead and tries to run it again, except this time as a raw GET request. Um, and it asks for either the JSON or the Sparkle API uh, XML, and it'll return back the results. Um, the, this way, um, the, the tool has a way to, to do fallback um, and still return back results. If that would fail, it would give you back an error response that would tell you um, what ha happened. Um, so you can save these results. Um, Right now, uh, the, the Sparkle browser really is a browser, um, but in the next couple of weeks, it's gonna start to change. So um, I will be adding functionality so that you can load um, a uh, triple store, so data um, in a local store, uh, and work directly with it. So I will probably provide some 
uh, a demonstration of how that would work um, using a, a local data store that I have. Um, and ideally, that's going to mean being able to integrate, for example, um, the linked identifiers tool here with the ability to point collections that are defined in the rules file to local data stores. So for example, let's say right now, if you were resolving LC headings, um, if you were to download the LC data um, in something like Turtle um, or you know, RDF XML, you could potentially point um, the collections tool at that rather than at the um, remote endpoint. Um, and have the tool actually access the data remotely, which I believe probably will result in the process working faster. Um, but I haven't actually tested it yet to see how that, that actually works out. Um, longer term, um, all the code that runs the Sparkle browser now um, is actually um, set up to both read um, and write data back to, to a uh, triple store. So. Um, presumably, um, what this means is that over the next few weeks, I'll start experimenting with um, what that means in terms of um, building editing interfaces for um, data that you can query through a Sparkle endpoint and update through a Sparkle endpoint. So I'm not quite sure yet what that's going to look like or how that's going to work. Um, and so I might be reaching out for feedback, but I think that it'll be interesting to uh, start to um, start to experiment a little bit because I'm, I'm just not sure yet what that looks like, um, but we'll see. If you have questions, let me know.